Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. We wanted to include an excerpt from our course called Claris FileMaker Pro Intermediate. This is the second in a series of courses designed to help you, the Claris FileMaker developer, gain an understanding of how to build your own apps. In this intermediate course, we take things up to the next level. We learn about scripts, script triggers, more advanced layouts, going to separate layouts, printing to PDFs, sending an email. We learn about looping and some other advanced techniques that you normally would get to in a real world situation, especially if you are now starting to work with a main table and a table of line items. Those two are common in the workplace when it comes to database design and development. And the intermediate course starts touching upon those topics and bringing your skills to the next level. Here we've included an excerpt talking about the overview of script triggers, what they are, how they work, when you'd use them. And this video talks about that. So if you're brand new to the world of script triggers, you might enjoy this lesson. So we'll include that now. And we invite you to go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com to enroll in this course called Claris FileMaker Pro Intermediate. Thanks for joining us. And now on to the lesson. In this lesson, we talk about script triggers. We'll provide an overview of what they are, how they work, the order in which they are presented and executed, as well as the different types of script triggers. If you look down below this video, there's a link to the Claris help page describing and talking about setting up script triggers. And I'd like to read a few excerpts from this page because I think it explains it in a fairly easy and straightforward way although the best way to learn script triggers is to actually work with them hands-on. With that said, let's read about these first and talk about what you can expect with script triggers. You can set up a script trigger to specify that a script runs when an event occurs. For example, you can use a script trigger to run a script that automatically enters data in fields based on what is entered in another field. Let's take a quick look at how this might work and we'll use our PCU gaming company file as an example. Let's say that I wanted to present a dialog box when the user clicks this box that says delivery instructions. And the idea is that when the user clicks this box, we want to bring up a quick dialog box that says, don't forget to include X, Y, Z, just as a friendly reminder before they even enter their first delivery instruction text. So I'd go to layout mode, select the field. I can right click and set script trigger. I also have the option here under format, set script trigger that way. Then this dialog box appears, giving me any number of script triggers that are applicable to this type of object. In this case, it's a text field. Notice that on panel switch is officially a script trigger, but not in the context of a text field. So that's why it's grayed out and I can't even select it if I tried. But for this simple example, I'll click on object enter. Then it brings up a specify script dialog box indicating which script I'd like to trigger when that object is entered. So let me create a quick script here and I'll call this delivery dialog. And we will just simply show a custom dialog box. Please remember to include details about destination charges. And then the user can push OK. And that is the entirety of that script. But delivery dialog is what will trigger when the object is entered. Notice down here I have the option to enable in browse mode or find mode. I can do one of the other or both or neither. Neither would allow me to temporarily disable the script trigger if I wasn't quite ready to turn it on, but I wanted to save script that it was attached to. So I'll just push OK now. Go back to browse mode and a simple test of this is I'll click here inside the delivery instructions. It triggers the script. Please remember to include details about destination charges. I can push OK. That script is complete and now I can just start entering my delivery instructions. If I were to tab to that field, the same thing happens. It went from invoice number to delivery instructions and that also triggered the object because it was entered, whether it be your mouse or tabbing, technically speaking, that field was entered. 
and it will do that each and every time. So that's a simple example of what a script trigger is, but there are numerous options here, and we'll be exploring that here later in this section with each type with a little bit more detail. So back to the help file, some script triggers run the script before an event is processed by the database engine. Other script triggers run the script after an event is processed by the database engine. For example, you could use the on object enter script trigger, which by the way is the one we just used, to run a script after the field was entered. So this would be considered after processing script trigger. And it specifies here, the field is the object, entering the field is the event. So the event is processed after the user clicks inside the field. Script triggers can be activated by user actions or by scripts. For example, you could use the on object enter script trigger to activate a script to run when a field is entered by a user clicking it or by a go to object script step. I showed you the example where we tabbed into the field and clicked into the field, but other scripts themselves can also trigger scripts. For example, the go to object script step will in fact also create the process to happen. So script triggers can be activated on a layout, on objects within a layout, when the file is closed or opened, and against window actions. So here are all the different script triggers. Notice the type. We have object script trigger types, which are applied to a specific object on a layout. Notice that it shows here the before processing or after processing behavior. Here are the layout type script triggers. This acts on the layout as a whole, regardless of object. And then we have file options, which act on whether the window is opened or closed, or on file AV player change, which is something that applies only to the mobile devices using FileMaker Go or Claris Go. So there's a lot to explore here. In this course, we won't be looking at each one of these in great detail, but we'll take a few selected examples and then you can explore the rest on your own. Now, if you have multiple script triggers happening, let's just say you had an on object keystroke script trigger, but you also had a layout trigger and you also had a window trigger all happening within the same script or within the same process, then there's a timing that happens. These do have a very specific order of timing that you need to be aware of as a developer. And if you think about how these are laid out timing wise, it does make sense from a logical standpoint that they ordered this the way that they did. Let me just briefly explain the order of these. On first window open would be when the file first opens and that window is drawing for the first time. Then you have a script trigger and obviously that would be the very first thing to happen. Then if you added another window, that would be also very early on in the order. Then entering the layout, then you enter the mode, then you actually load the record, then you can change the layout size or change the view from browse mode to preview mode, let's say. As we get towards the end of the list, you can see that the last things to trigger are on window close and on last window close. So if you just follow this along, it'll make sense. The order of these aren't really as important if you only have one or two script triggers indicated on a particular layout, but when you get to a situation where you're using multiple on a layout, you might want to know the order of operations here so that you can be aware of the behavior to expect. Also note that this particular information is oftentimes included on a certification test. And if you were to commit this to memory and take a certification test, any questions answered about these and the order that they are executed would be handy to know. Then there's some notes here that you might want to read through, some tips. This one pertains to how script triggers work with security. This one pertains to how script triggers work with custom web publishing or the data API and some other small details. Okay, on the next lessons, we'll take a look at a few of these script triggers and look at some of the most commonly used script triggers and apply that to our working file. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson extract from our course called Claris FileMaker Pro Intermediate. To find out more, you can go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com, where you'll find this course along with several others training you on the Claris platform. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to subscribe and like, and we'll catch you on the next one.